Hello and welcome to picture books made and published by a company called Tiny Owl. Now they're not really owls and they're not really tiny but it's a good name isn't it? Easy to remember and the name of this story is Paris Cat. My name is Christine. So Let's find out what this is all about. Turn over the pages. They're lovely thick pages. Oh, here we are. It says again, Paris Cat. And the story is by Diane Hofmeyer and the pictures are by Pete Grobler. Now, Paris is the capital city of France. Every country has its own capital city and they're usually big important towns where there are beautiful buildings, wide roads called boulevards, where there are cafes and art galleries and very nice shops too. <laughs> now, as you can see here, this story begins in the night time. The buildings are all dark and the moon is shining. And the story begins like this. Cat was born in Paris, not on a grand boulevard, but in a narrow, smelly alleyway behind the fishmonger's stall. She grew up with hordes of brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles and friends all squabbling over the tastiest pickings. Fish heads, fish tails, fish eyes, <laughs> a cockle shells to lick and a crab or two to pick. When we turn over, we find Oh, it's a mice, much brighter picture. In fact, it's inside a nightclub. Let's see what it says here. Where's the story bit? But Cat wanted to see more of the world. One night, to escape the rain, she slunk into a crowded cafe where a lady was singing. And this is the lady. Now, although this is a story, this lady was a real person. Her name was Edith Piaf and she was a wonderful singer with a most unusual, beautiful voice. Everybody absolutely loved her singing voice. They loved her and they loved her songs. And so into this cafe went our little cat and she's right down here in the corner. Can you see her? Right down there, look. And when she listens to Edith Piaf singing, she goes, Hiff! Cat blew air from the side of her mouth, as French cats do. I can do that, she mewed. Everyone knows cats can sing. But in fact, it didn't go very well at all. No, no, nothing at all, <laughs> because her voice could not match Edith Piaf's at all. So the waiter nearly dropped his tray. This man's got a horrified look on his face. And they also shouted out, stop that caterwauling. You don't belong here. You don't belong here. Scat, alley cat. Out in the rain, cat climbed a fire escape and slipped through an opening into a dark room. Under a huge table, she found a nest of materials, silk and satin, tulle and taffeta, velvet. Now, this is velvet. It's that soft, shiny material. And the way I'm dressed today is like the artists who were 
in Paris at the time. They loved to paint pictures of all the people and all the buildings. And they liked to wear a French beret and a nice bright waistcoat. So she fell under the table and she fell fast asleep. And the whole of this page is one big picture and it's all dark because it's night time and all the workers have gone home. And there's a great big huge pair of scissors on the top there, but she's safe underneath. She's settled herself in and made herself a kind of a little bed or a little nest with all these pieces of material. And this is the reason why the shop was like that. It's a workroom where Madame Delphine, can you see her? Yes, you can see her. Madame Delphine and her workers were making very nice hats and very unusual dresses. And the story says, when she woke, when Cat woke, it was to the scrimp, scrimp, scrimp of scissors and the whirr, whirr of sewing machines. On every side hung rails of the most exquisite dresses. She narrowed her eyes and watched carefully. Being a French cat, she understood every instruction that Madame Delphine was giving to her seamstresses in the atelier. There she is again. There's Madame Delphine. And this is what she was saying. She was saying, hmm, a little tuck here, a little pleat there. The material must cascade. And here it was, all different pieces of material, like this, different colours, all mixtures. Oh, the fabric, she called it. The fabric must cascade. <laughs> so, that evening, when the door of the atelier, now an atelier is a, a workroom or a studio where things are made. When the door of the atelier clicked shut, Cat gathered up the finest snippets. Ooh, like this, all oh, different pieces all over the place. And she jumped up onto the cutting table. The scissors were large and heavy, but scrimp, 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 she managed. Now, I don't usually bend books back like this. I keep them nice and flat and I look after them carefully because I love books. But here it makes it easier for me to show you the pictures. And you see now, ooh, Cat dressed up all the bits of material here. Then she claw stri claw stitched the pieces bit by bit and sewed on a few spangly sequins. Now I turn her over again. Ooh, lovely crackly noise, I love it. <laughs> Down the fire escape she slid and then sauntered in her best catwalk style into a nightclub where another lady was dancing alongside a cheetah wearing a diamond studded collar. And here they are. This lady is called Josephine Baker and again she was a real person. And so was the cheetah that she had with her. Cheetah, Chiquita Cheetah, had been given to her as a present. And as it says in the story, ooh, he was wearing a diamond studded collar like this. <laughs> oh, 
very, very special. She was lovely. She was very, very popular too. Everybody loved her. She'd been born in America, but she came to Paris to make her fame and to sing and dance. And she had a wonderful sense of humour as well, because one of the things that she did was to get some artificial bananas and string them all together, all the way around, to make this floppy, flippy little skirt for herself. And when she danced, so they flipped around and she wore a lot of beads and necklaces and earrings and bangles as well. And all the people in Paris absolutely loved that. They thought that was wonderful. Prr, said Cat, now Cat's down here in the corner again. I can do that. Everyone knows cats are good dancers. So she had another try at this in this nightclub. She jumped up on the stage and she joined the chorus line behind Josephine here. And wow, this time it was a big success. She was nimble on her tiny cat feet. Now, when Chiquita the cheetah saw Cat, she purred and put out her paw. Come, dance with me, Miss Kitty, she purred. And there they are together. She did. And so Cat did. She swung her satiny hips to the swinging jazzy beats and this time the audience clapped and cheered and wanted more. Promise to come back tomorrow, Miss Kitty, Chiquita purred. There's, there's the collar, you see? Like this one, mine slipped. There it is. <laughs> And turning over, ah, what have we got? Oh, and so when she was invited, Cat did. And every night she arrived in a new outfit made with swip snippets and swippets from Madame Delphine's atelier. And then she danced the night away. That's a good picture, isn't it? All the lovely spangly beady things, lots of different flippy floppy things. Oh, there's a bit more story. It says, soon she was famous, so famous that her name appeared next to Josephine Baker's and Chiquita's on every poster. And here's the poster. Here's the wall. And here it says Josephine's name and there she is with feathers and spangles and high heels and then Chiquita and here's Chiquita with a bouquet of flowers and as well as that there was also Kitty and here's Kitty with them as well and that's a poster that went on all the walls all the way around Paris to let people know to come to the show at the nightclub. So, Madame Kitty's Catacomb Club opened in Paris. And now this time we can see Kitty. Oh, she likes red, doesn't she? And she's got flags waving from her arms, a feather in her hair and snippets of material to make her little dress. And she's the one doing all the dancing this time. And down below, lots and lots of different cats have come from all over Paris to her nightclub to listen to her and to watch her dancing. And some of them, can you just see here? Am I pointing to the right place? There, look. They've brought their fish dinners with them. Because if you go to a nightclub, sometimes you can have something to eat while you are watching the show.
So, here we are back at Madame Delphine's again. If you're lucky, you might even catch a glimpse of Madame Kitty herself. But if you don't, perhaps it's because she is off exploring and making a new life. Cats have nine lives after all. But one thing you can be sure of, to this day, everyone at Madame Delphine's atelier is puzzled by the fact that no snippets of cloth ever found under the cutting table, all clean and tidy. And there's Kitty, off on her travels, looking a little bit like Dick Whittington, with all her belongings tied up in one of the pieces of material from Madame Delphine's atelier. And different material here and different material here. And she's a very adventurous cat. And she had a wonderful life. All because of her adventurous spirit. And when we get to the end of the book, right at the very back of the story, Here's two more pictures. This time, here is Edith Piaf, and next to her is Josephine Baker, still wearing her little banana skirt, you see. <laughs> and it tells you some true things about Edith Piaf. It says that she was born into a very, very poor family. And in fact, her grandma had to be the one to bring her up because after a few years, Edith didn't even have a mummy. But when she grew up, she became very brave indeed, as well as using all the talents that she had been born with and her lovely singing. But she also was very brave in saving people from dangerous times, the times that Edith Piaf lived in. And then it tells us about Josephine as well. Now, she was also born into a very, very poor family in America. But again, she was lucky enough to have this personality with a good singing voice and an idea how to make a show with her dancing. And she became so popular and so rich that she was able to afford to adopt 12 different children from 12 different countries all around the world and bring them to her home and bring them up as one big happy family all together. So that was two very wonderful women, wasn't it? And of course, not forgetting our Paris cat, who also had a very cheeky, clever personality of her own. I well, don't forget my name's Christine and I'll see you again next time. Come back and I'll have another story from a different country. Bye.